As of 2025, tens of billions of dollars have already been invested in a new type of transportation, with over 1,000 companies developing passenger multi-copters. From ultralight single-seaters with a very limited range, to hybrid models competing not just with helicopters but with business jets. Some are designing their creations for private ownership, others are focused on fully autonomous flight services while larger aircraft still leave room for a pilot. We'll review each use case and the limitations it brings. What markets and niches will VTOL aircraft can realistically target in the future and what growth prospects companies have? But the real question isn't if these machines will go mainstream, it's when they'll finally make sense for everyone. If someone doubts the benefits of this new mode of transport due to its limited performance or high cost, they're not wrong. Right now, there really aren't any significant advantages yet. But the same was true for the first steam-powered cars in the 18th century and the gasoline-powered ones in the 19th century which were worse than the oldest horse. They were slow, had a very limited range, were difficult to operate, smelled terrible, and broke down every 10 kilometers. But progress doesn't ask for permission from skeptics. Technology kept advancing, and in the end, horses stayed in stables while cars got stuck in traffic. And just as many struggled to envision a practical car of the future back then, today, Many fail to consider the true potential of multi-copters, rushing to judgment too soon. Because battery density doubles every 7 to 10 years, while costs decrease at a slightly slower pace by half every 12-13 years. At the same time, alternative energy storage technologies are emerging such as solid-state batteries, lithium metal, and lithium sulfur. Clean and promising hybrid systems using hydrogen fuel cells are continued to evolve and we don't know what we don't know. There are discoveries yet to be made. But if we look decades ahead, assuming we don't see any major catastrophes or wars, we will almost certainly find an affordable flying vehicle with the right specs for daily use and comfortable travel. But you probably won't be able to buy one. The percentage of the population living in cities is rapidly growing, and urban areas are becoming more densely packed. The main challenge is figuring out how to integrate this new mode of transport into the existing infrastructure. At one time, cars provided a great solution for comfortable travel, but today they are the root of the problem in many major cities locked in traffic jams. And that's despite the fact that automakers actively lobbied for massive road construction, demolishing entire neighborhoods in the process. Yes, VTOL aircrafts can open up new dimensions. Where there were once four lanes, there could be a hundreds. But there's one big issue. Where will all these multi-copters take off from? Where will they be stored while waiting for their moment of glory? Or rather, their brief 10-minute flights? Will we end up stuck on a takeoff pad instead of in a traffic jam, waiting for clearance to fly? Because for every takeoff, there also needs to be a free landing spot. And hovering in place for long isn't an option. And how much will that landing spot cost? Even today on certain routes, landing fees can become the biggest expense. What happens when millions of EV tolls are produced and the competition for landing space skyrockets? Maybe this could be the solution. Nice. If roads are the main limiting factor for cars, then for EV tolls, it's parking space. We've somehow managed to squeeze cars into massive parking lots, often far from where people actually need to be, or stack them in multi-story garages. But where will we park the flying vehicles of the future, considering they require significantly more space per passenger? Just like car access to many city centers is now restricted and monetized, the same thing will happen with rotorcrafts. No matter how cheap the flight itself gets, landing might still feel like paying rent in Manhattan. So unless you're rich, enjoy the view from below. But hey, Maybe a few well-connected billionaires will throw enough money at flying cars and completely reshape our cities? What will they even look like? Vertiports eating up the top five floors of every building? Or will we have one on every floor like in the fifth element? Is that the future we're dreaming of? And let's not forget the noise. Sure, the tech is getting quieter. Ducted fans, maybe even ones hidden deep inside the body, toroidal blades, zipline propeller, magic fairy dust. But the question remains, 
Do you really want to hear your neighbor's giant blenders launching into the sky outside your kitchen window every morning? So as a personal vehicle in the city, the future of multi-copters looks pretty grim. Unless we start building garages into every other window and make them quieter than your ex's post-bean salad monologues. In fact, we can easily imagine a bright future alongside urban air cars. For now, eVTOLs can only realistically capture a noticeable share of traffic as taxi services, not door-to-door -door, but rather on fixed routes. The last mile problem would have to be solved independently on the ground, unless you're lucky enough to work in a building with a vertiport on its roof. Lightweight multi-copters will help expand the number of potential landing sites. While Volocopter plans to launch its air taxi service with a pilot on board, other companies are designing vehicles without manual controls from the outset, and single-seat capsules leave no option but full autonomy. Advanced wing models with tilt rotors or lift and cruise systems will deliver quicker, smoother trips to suburbs and transit hubs. But these will need major infrastructure, standalone vertiports with full ground support. Crucially, human pilots remain essential for larger cabins. Some forward-thinking companies are already offering end-to-end -end solutions. VTOL aircraft, transforming into van-sized vehicle to bridge the last mile gap. The most intense competition and innovation race among EV tall producers will concentrate precisely in this small to medium air taxi market segment. Even though air transport will only account for a small percentage of total traffic, it might just remove that critical excess of vehicles that overwhelms choke points and creates jams. So, even if you're afraid of flying or can't afford the service yourself, you'll still benefit from others using it. As personal urban transport, these vehicles will appear in the coming decades about as often as a horse-drawn carriage. And if the new Lamborghini can surprise only your back these days, then a status flying toy could open more interesting things than scissor doors. And you don't even need to actually fly. Like a Bugatti that could, but doesn't need to hit 300 miles per hour to deliver pure joy and superiority. Unfolding the rotors and knowing you could lift off is enough to feel revolutionary. Sometimes the thrill is just in knowing your ride defies ground rules. But in specific environments like mountainous regions, private eVTOLs could replace personal cars to some extent, cutting morning commute in half or four. When it comes to private ownership, selective adoption could occur for ultralight single-seater VTOL aircraft. The US, for example, has weight limits for license-free aircraft operations of course, restricted to non-urban airspace. These will serve as exciting new toys for outdoor recreation, a fresh alternative to ATVs, jet skis, or trail bikes that people haul to their riding spots. Startups are already rolling out clever foldable designs that you can transport like any other piece of adventure gear. Xpeng Aerot is pushing boundaries with its two-in-one concept, an electric camper featuring a built-in two-seat folding multi-copter. We'll inevitably see DIY communities emerge. Enthusiasts building EV tolls from scrap parts, free blueprints, and open source software. For the price of a used car, you could be building your personal flyer. Zero paperwork, pure adrenaline. While passenger multicopters may never fully replace cars due to weather limitations and limited payload capacity, this is a promising technology, one that could even save lives through medical evacuations. They have the potential to revolutionize transportation in rural, mountainous, and forested areas, as well as island hopping, cutting travel time dramatically. And let's be honest, it's just exciting to watch this industry evolve. Unlike cars whose design has largely stalled, the most efficient forms of multicopters are still to be discovered. Those who crack the code will dominate a market worth hundreds of billions. The global passenger transport market is estimated at around $5 trillion, and that includes personal car sales, air travel, railways, and urban transit. So let's try to estimate what share of that could VTOL aircraft potentially take over. And let's take a look at the perspective for 2040, when batteries will offer comfortable flight range, infrastructure projects, and mass production will emerge. 
Light helicopters will clearly take a hit, as EVTOLs will be able to handle the same tasks much more cheaply and comfortably. That includes emergency transport and personnel delivery, but it's a relatively small market on its own. Multicopters will also capture a share of the VIP transport market, airport-to-city transfers, corporate shuttles, and event logistics. On the entertainment side, they'll transform tourism and sightseeing, while potentially spawning entirely new niches like multicopter racing leagues or aerial theme park. They'll disrupt regional aviation, replacing small planes as well as bite into some rail and intercity bus traffic. Urban air taxi is the obvious application, including alternative to city public transport. But how fast that scales will heavily depend on infrastructure. Eventually, Evitols might even become a garage companion to your personal car. Though even by 2040, they'll barely scratch half a percent of the personal transport market. And while we're talking about passenger transport, some startups are actually targeting cargo delivery. And don't forget, the overall passenger transport market is growing fast. It's expected to double in 15 years at a modest 5% annual growth and triple if it grows by 8%. So even in a skeptical scenario, the VTOL aircraft market could reach $50 billion. In an optimistic one, closer to half a trillion dollars. Of course, these numbers are wildly approximate based on talks with various AI models and about as reliable as a sandcastle in a storm but they give you a sense of the growth potential. And Morgan Stanley, six years ago, predicted a $1.5 trillion market by 2040. Right now, the combined market cap of the top three players in this space doesn't even hit $10 billion. The skies will roar with VTOL soon. But today, your like is the ticket. And please consider subscribing. Before you go, your next video is waiting.